welcome, welcome to Linear Rock. Hello, thank you for having me. How are you? How are you? Where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Maine currently. Taylor, so the new Pretty Reckless album by Rock and Roll is in the pipeline and will arrive by early 20. Um, you have released recently, just these days, the title as the new single. It's a great old school song in your style. And I wanted to ask you what's behind the title and actually song is in a, in a sense autobiographical, it's about you, but somehow taken also, you know, a superstitious meaning towards of the pandemic on the rock world. That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, Death by Rock and Roll, the song, uh, it's the first song on the album. So it was the first song that I, I was very happy that the first song people got to hear because it kind of introduces the record properly. Um, it's the song is it's our battle cry to rock and roll. It's it's our battle cry for life of, you know, to me, rock and roll is freedom. It's it's uh, it's it, it represents everything. And, and so the song is saying live life your own way, go out your own way, don't let anyone tell you differently, rock and roll until you die, you know? <laughs> Taylor, did you take the chance to put, you know, finished touches or changes or maybe to add new tracks to the new album during the lockdown period? We have not. We, uh, we finished the album in January. Um, and so, it, and we worked very, very hard on it. We worked on it for... I think it it almost took two years to make. So uh, it's it's finished. <laughs> we were <laughs> um, so now it's now it's the now we're just slowly releasing things. You know, Death by Rock and Roll's out. Um, there'll be more singles to come very soon, and then you know, eventually the whole album. Taylor, it's been a while since you know the third album, Who You Selling For, uh, was released. It was 2016. What will surprise your fans about these new recordings, you know, after so long that you don't actually uh, release anything? Um, I mean, I think we've grown a lot. Uh, this re We went through quite a bit in the past few years, um, a lot of tragedy, a lot of hardship, a lot of heartache. And this record is kind of, it's us coming out of that. So it, it almost feels like a rebirth for the band. Uh, it feels like the first record in a lot of ways where we really put everything we had into this album. I mean, emotionally, physically, mentally, we threw ourselves into it and it's all there in the songs for you to hear, but it, it really kind of, it tells a story of, of where I've been and where I'm going over the past few years. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just really excited for everyone to hear it and come on that journey with me. In my opinion, it's the best record we've ever made. <laughs> wow. Taylor, the new single that by Rock and Roll is out on a seven inch limited edition vinyl and the cover features you, uh, Taylor, on a motorbike. And I read that the song is dedicated also to Kato, your producer who died in 2018. Do you want to tell us more about the edition and about the dedication? Um, well, that was, I mean, losing Kato was... Uh, devastating to say the least i don't want to get too heavy into it um but the making of this record I, I went very down into a depression and the making of this record was the thing that pulled me out of it and so the single death by rock and roll was something he used to say all the time and so that's kind of that was kind of the start of of, of seeing the vision for this record and uh the single cover was very much a uh, trip paying tribute to him of uh, with the motorcycles and, and kind of the over-the-top, almost 80s rock, uh, just super bold image, which isn't really my thing. Like, I don't personally love 80s rock at all, but he did. So it's it's very much paying homage to what he loved. Uh, and, and there's a lot of little hidden things inside the picture that you won't notice right now, but when the album comes out, it'll make more sense. There'll be little, there's little Easter eggs, if you will. <laughs> Taylor, you announced uh, as special guests Tom Morello and uh, Kim Tae-il and Matt Cameron from Soundgarden. 
for uh, for the next record are they friends or uh, did you know the artistic direction of the new album um, brought you to call a- exactly them you also recorded in the legendary Seattle studios where Paul Jam and Soundgarden actually recorded that they their iconic masterpieces if I'm correct yes you are uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a it's a bit of both. I mean, um, uh, they're, yes, they're friends, uh, but collaborations to me have to come about very organically. Um, and for this record, there's a song called "Only Love Can Save Me Now," and that was just is begging for Soundgarden. It's kind of Soundgarden esque style to it, and so I called Matt uh, and sent it to him, and I was like, "Are you got? Would you and Kim want to?" play on this is this something you'd be interested in and, and he was they were totally in so we flew to seattle uh recorded at london birch studios which was just amazing to be there like you said it was they recorded pearl jams 10 there and Soundgarden's louder than love there and yeah. seattle just has such an amazing energy and and <coughs> so conducive for creativity so to be in that studio with the guys who made those amazing records working on on our record on something new is just so surreal and so great And Tom Morello, kind of a similar story. Um, a friend who I kind of re- I reconnected with him actually at the Chris Cornell tribute concert, the I'm the Highway uh, tribute concert in Los Angeles a few years back. And he, him and I were actually playing with Soundgarden for that on a song called Loud Love. So we kind of reconnected there and he's featured on a song called And So It Went. And uh Kind of the same situation i called him and it was it, it needed a guitar solo and uh and I, it really was asking for his unique voice i mean tom morello has such a such a such a defining quality to how he plays that i mean he's one of the best guitar players in the world <laughs> so yeah. uh so i was like hey, tom is this something you'd be interested in and i sent it to him and sure enough he said yes and when he i'll tell you this i don't want to give too much away but when he comes in when his solo starts it wails it's so awesome it makes the song <laughs> as you mentioned uh about chris cornell at uh, the tribute concert but actually you taylor and pretty reckless were there that night uh, of chris cornell passing on may 17th 2017 in detroit at the fox theater what do you remember of that evening you know and of him especially in, in what turn actually to be his last performance and his last moments alive uh, i mean it's a very heavy question uh i mean that that tour was such i mean soundgarden's my favorite band on the planet it's the beatles and soundgarden so to be on that tour i see your t-shirt yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so to be on that tour was such a highlight for us i mean it was such we we're so excited to be there and uh And that last show, I mean, it was, everything seemed as normal. Um, you know, I, I, they played, I actually, we were hanging out backstage in the parking lot with the, with the band. Um, Chris came out to, uh, to leave the venue after the show. I, I stopped to say goodbye. It was the last night of the tour. Um, you know, we chatted for a moment and gave him a hug. He got in his car and, you know, I woke up to the news the next morning and I was, Uh, devastated to say the least I, I I didn't know how to process what had just happened I was I was crushed um, to the point where I wasn't able to continue touring I wasn't in a good place to be public I needed to take some time and go home and reflect and try to um, digest what had just happened so that was kind of the end of I mean we, we toured a little bit after that but that was kind of the end of that touring cycle because it really hit me hard and I needed some time to process that and then And then right after that, not too long after that, uh, Cato, our producer and my best friend passed. And so it was kind of a, a one-two punch of a lot of loss very quickly. And that, that very much dragged me down into depression and, and a hole that I didn't quite know how to get out of or if I ever was going to get out of it. And it was a very scary time. And, um, and to make a very long story that's very depressing, lighter and quicker, uh, it was music. I turned to music to, to pull me out of that. And, and it was my salvation. It was rock and roll was, is the thing that I say it's my best friend because it's the thing I can always turn to and it's always there for me and it never lets me down. So the writing of this record and the making of this record really was 
Um, that's why I say it's like a rebirth. It was me really coming out of this hole that I had gone into and, and coming, you know, feeling almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes and coming out on the other side. Because when tragedy and things, you know, everyone goes through hardships in life. And when something, you know, that devastating hits you, it's, it's how you recover from it and how you move forward that defines you because, you know, that's all you can do. It's either you let it define you and, and you go down permanently or you, you learn from it, you use it and you, and you grow. And I tried to, I tried to grow. And that's, that's what this record is. It's a lot of homage to a lot of fallen people and loved ones. So Taylor, you've been an actress with Jim Carrey in The Grinch, Spy Kids. You've done Gossip Girl as a TV series, uh, as we all know, and brilliantly, I must say. Uh, let's say you, you have been, uh, you know, a rocker lent to the movies for quite a while. And in the end, you chose your way and found rock and roll. Uh, can we say that your debut as an actress has assisted your skills as a rock performer in a sense and helped you, you know, to take out the rocker that is in you? Honestly, no. I, <laughs> I, they're so different. Like, they have, they have nothing to do with each other. Um, I mean, music is so personal. It's so... Uh, inward and then when you get on stage there's obviously an outward persona that comes out you know a public persona but there's no character involved it's just it's just me you know um okay. i think if anything the one thing that acting as a, in from my childhood the one the one thing it taught me was that it taught me how to have a, a, a very good work ethic that's the one because i started working at such a young age that it was kind of instilled into me um so i carried that into my adulthood but as far as acting and music goes they're completely different <laughs> tell a big role that you have refused since uh, you retired from all that you perhaps regretted or maybe one that you would like to do to end up you know that career as the final definitive part one last time uh no <laughs> <laughs> no um, okay there's no so, no. so you are <laughs> The, I think the only way that I would, I, I'm music all the way. Act, I was never an actress. It was something I did as a child because I got put into it, you know. Um, as an adult, it's it's just not something that, it's not for me. But if someone wanted to cast me as like a cameo to play myself or something, like Chris Cornell in the movie Singles, okay. then that's something maybe I'd consider. But I'm not, I'm not looking to... Uh, to go back to acting at all. <laughs> Taylor, what is the first rock record you bought? The, the one that grafted, you know, the germ of rock and roll into you? It's a good question. Um, I didn't actually have to buy many records because my dad had them all. Okay. So, so, <laughs> I, so I did, they already, I already had them all. Um, like, you know, I grew up starting with, my dad made me mixtapes. Uh, so it was, you know, the Beatles was the first band that I fell in love with as a child. And that's what, that's what really put its hooks into me and made me fall in love with rock and roll. And then as I got older, it, I really fell in love with the 90s stuff, you know, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, uh, Alice in Chains, uh, Rage Against the Machine, uh, and then, you know, and then all the classics, you know, The Who, Pink Floyd, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, uh, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, Cream, uh, Bob Dylan. I could just keep listing bands, but uh, it's, it was really fun just because I, I grew up in a household that was so rock and had such a rock and roll uh, energy about it because it was being played all the time. So it was instilled into me at such a young age. And then this, as I got older, I just learned to appreciate it more and more and, and delve further and further into all the artists that I grew up listening to and really appreciate them as an adult. So, I, you know, I actually understood the music on a deeper level than as I did as a child. Being a beautiful girl in rock gives you like an extra gear or it's like, you know, inserting the reverse nowadays some way, especially, you know, with your past career as an actress and, and a model. I mean, I don't know. I don't really think about it. You know, I think uh, image and stuff like I, I, I love fashion and I love to me, it's just another form of self-expression. So it's just. It's, you know, I dress with how I feel that day and, you know, and uh, it, that's kind of it. It's you're just it's a it's an outward look of how you feel on the inside. You know, that's how I approach fashion. It's just 
what what do I feel like today? That's what I'm going with, you know. And you also um, work with Madonna's daughter. How was that? Actually, was that a good experience? It was a great experience. I haven't talked about that in forever. Um, <laughs> it was a while ago. Uh, no, it was really cool. Uh, her and her daughter were fantastic, great to work with, very sweet people. Um, they had a very clear vision of what they wanted for, for the brand. And, uh, and I just did my best to help, you know, accomplish that <laughs> and help them okay. like, their vision to life. Um, but they were very, very cool with working with me. And, and they hired me for me. They didn't try to morph me into someone else. You know, they let me do my makeup how I wanted to do my makeup and uh, style the clothes how I'd wear them. So it was a, it was a cool, uh, it was a very cool experience. Do you have other eaten artistic ambitions since you've done a lot, but is there maybe any surprise we can expect from you like in 10 years from now? Maybe, I don't know, you, you paint or something like that? Well, I do paint and I do sculpt um, in my free time, but I mean, for right now, that's just for me. That's just a hobby that's that I'm going to keep just, just for me personally. Um, but maybe if I get a little better, maybe one day, <laughs> maybe one day I'll share with the world. <laughs> right now, it's just something I do for fun and it kind of calm, it calms my nerves. It's like a, it's a good, it's like meditation. So Taylor, last question for tonight. Um, did you already uh, like fixed planned the first public, you know, appearance commitment as pretty reckless after the pandemic or everything is still, you know, in the plans? Everything is still up in the air. Um, I mean, we had we had a fantastic schedule before, <laughs> before COVID started. Uh, we were supposed to be on tour right now. I mean, we we're going to be all over the world, uh, all over the U.S. We had. Uh, dates with you know the Foo Fighters and Guns and Roses and Pearl Jam and was, we we're very excited uh, <laughs> forward to it, but uh, I'm not exactly sure when it's all going to start up again. But I do know that none of that stuff's actually canceled. It's all just postponed, so it's all just pushed. So it's just kind of the waiting game. We're waiting to see when it's safe again, and when it is, we'll be going everywhere again and and rocking stages around the world. We're very much looking forward to it. Thanks very much for this interview and we're looking forward to have you back to Italy and now we're going to close the show with Back to the River so you want to introduce it to our fans? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you guys so much for the support and uh, here's one more for you all. This is Back to the River. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.